Welcome to Bizeland, Mikey. What is going on this week? First off, Jason, we have a couple of conference finals games that are two and one. Who who are you leaning towards in those series? Are you going with the two and one favorites, or are you going with the underdog? Let me let me know your finals choices right now because we forgot to bring them up last week. Yeah, so so right now, just to preface for everybody, so Miami is up two to one on Boston. The Lakers are up two to one on Denver. I am gonna go and I want to see a Miami Lakers final. I want to see a Miami Lakers final, and I think it's going to be a Miami Lakers final. So yes, we're both going with yeah. both of the favorites here. The Lakers very well could have been down two to one. Oh, totally. <laughs> They're still, they're still an inconsistent yeah. team at times. I mean, like, LeBron, oh, yeah. LeBron always fires at a certain level. But even, like, I mean, tonight, so September 22nd, 2020, I mean, you have Dwight Howard, JaVale, Anthony Davis. I think they had, like, three rebounds in, like, the, the it was fourth so quarter or something like that. It's just, like, you know. Well, they, Anthony Davis, just, like, couldn't get a rebound until the fourth quarter. Yeah. Like, it, just, it, it was it – was, it was, Really surprising how badly out rebounded the Lakers were this game. Yeah, and just and just consistency. Was, Denver was plus nineteen on the boards, and then Jeremy Grant played a fantastic game. He was really yeah. aggressive. Got a play. I just I think he's been good throughout the playoffs as well. But you know, Denver is one of those teams where it's always good to have that. Their guy, they had Jeremy Grant, and then they had Monte Morris off the bench playing exceptionally well um, as far as scoring. He's always uh, really great with the ball. And then, um, you know, in the first half, Michael Porter did some really good things also. The Lakers did not bring it this game. <laughs> they, uh, it, was a, it was a rough one. And, uh, yeah, I, I felt like LeBron James played a great game. Um, still a lot of turnovers and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Like Denver has not a team that you want to, uh, to scrap with and, uh, oh, they, they can escalate things pretty quickly. I mean, yeah. like they're, they're a team that they can like really, and they made a comeback, you know, in game two as well. They were, Denver made it close yeah. you know, to, a, to a point, but yeah, it's just, it's about like for the Lakers about consistency. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Outside I mean, LeBron. Like, when they shoot as poorly as they did this game where they were 6 of 26 from three, not to mention, like, still shooting close to 50% from the field on the game. Um, but, yeah, that three-point shooting, that that's the factor that get, brings them up a notch. And, um, yeah, combined one for eight from LeBron and Anthony Davis. It was, uh, yeah, not the, not the best game for the Lakers. Uh, as we saw – in the last game of the Heat Celtics, the Celtics finally uh, really came and brought it. Well, because Gordon, they, it's Gordon Hayward, but they also got you know yeah. something very big, which was Gordon Hayward's mustache added to the added to the rotation. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty nonplussed about that one, but oh no, he, he looked like a. Okay. The fact that they didn't have to play uh, Shemi Ojale meaningful minutes in a playoff game, I think, is very nice. Not to mention the fact that Gordon Hayward brings you that little offensive punch is able to do some things off of the bounce and a uh, really good passer. Yeah. He, his minutes counted. And no, no, no. Uh, I thought Jalen Brown played a, a great game as well. Jason Tatum has just been fantastic. He's all, yeah. He's had a, he's had a great playoff run. And, but yeah, I still, I still like, I just like Miami. I just like, you know, I like, yeah, they're, they're like, really fun. Team. They're really fun. They're just team. A very well-constructed team. That's yeah. It's like, it's very interesting. Cause a lot of shooting there too. Yeah, these bubble playoffs are kind of like, yeah, they're they're really peaking at a good time. Really well together. Yeah. So, yeah, just a well-balanced team. But, yeah, so we have that. I wanted to give a shout-out. I have a new shirt today, and it is the logo of Perspective Insight. Uh, I've been helping out Pro Insight for a while. Um, It's run by my friend Matt McKay Jr., who was a scout with a, a few different teams. And... We're now doing um, these Prospective Insight Q&A series where we talk to a lot of up-and-coming prospects in high school and just about to uh, either be finishing college or going to college. 
and then um, have done a, a really good job on the tail of the tape as well, where we um, give video breakdowns uh, of prospects, big games throughout their playing career. So yeah, just a cool lo logo with the light bulb and the, the basketball. Definitely check out Pro Insight. Follow my friend Matt McKay Jr. There are a lot of talented people working for that site as well. So uh, definitely wanted to give them a shout out. Plus, I think this shirt is really awesome. Yeah, so uh, a lot yeah. of great, there's a lot of great content coming out on, on Pro Insight. So definitely, definitely check it out. Follow them on Twitter. Yeah. So as we promised last week, last week we did the best second round players currently in the NBA, second round around drafted. Uh, this week we are doing a 2020 NBA draft breakdown of just some names to know in the second round. These are guys that we think could either be steals or just fit on NBA roster. Just, yeah, like, it, and of course, we don't know where they're going to necessarily go in the draft. We have a rough range, yeah. but we don't, we don't have their exact draft range at this point. So what I decided to do was I used uh, – I'll call him a friend of the program. He's been a great guy to me. John Chepkevich. He works for Pro Basketball Combine and does some other things as well. Um, and is also another must follow on Twitter. Um, he has a very smart, like it's for major sites and basically draft minds all over the place. He makes a... Um, consensus big board so i decided rather than using just a sites single big board we combined a bunch and just have a relative draft range from that and um so yeah he even he breaks it down by tiers and like you know relative tiers it's a really cool formula this is version 3.0 of uh his consensus big board and that's where the rankings that we'll give of these players will be and these will all be players outside of the top 30 of those rankings Sounds simple enough, Jason? That sounds like it'll be the, the, the second round there. And, and it's also like, you know, in this draft, you know, where it's not the strongest draft ever, it's like this is where you possibly could gain value in the second round on some of your picks. So. I think all of the best players in this draft will come from the second round. Yeah. Like, this is a ridiculous <laughs> statement. I totally don't believe that. But, it's, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, it's just it's not a draft that anyone's really sold on consensus of these guys. So it's like. Yeah. Hey, there, there could be some, some good value. In just about every draft, you will get – if we nail, like, a couple of these guys as rotation players, I will be happy. Oh, no, totally. That's a success for the second round. Like, that's totally what you're – you know. As, as we said last week when we were doing the other second round rankings, and if you want to see that, go to the Viseland YouTube channel and all across your various podcast platforms to get Viseland and listen to that episode – but we will go into some of the top players. We're, we're just doing college guys and um, just a, a few players that we like. And we will start with a former Pac-12 player who just blew up this year at San Diego State. Um, had a fantastic year, was like – I don't think he was a first-team All-American, but he was a consensus All-American. He had a great year. Uh, he consensus second-team All-American. Yeah. And, yeah, um, the player that we're talking about, ranked number 33 on John Chepkevich's consensus big board, Malachi Flynn. And he was somebody who stood out while he was at Washington State. He is fantastic in the pick and roll. He can shoot a little bit. He's a really good point of attack defender, just a smart defender overall. Um, lacks a little bit of size. Size and athleticism are kind of his two yeah. points. And um, yeah, just in terms of the size thing, he was measured at um, the 2017 U19s. Malachi measured at, uh, hold on here. He was at 6'1", without shoes, 6'2", with shoes, 175, 6'3", wingspan, 7 foot, 10 and a half standing reach. So, yeah, his standing reach is uh, actually higher than I remember, but still relatively small for a point guard. 
Um, so that, the size concerns are where you, you kind of worry about the possible defensive translation, not to mention that a lot of point guards in the NBA are just fantastic. And, you know, it's a, it's a whole different league. Yeah, but he different. just played exceptionally well as a defender this year in uh, the Mountain West and just in general for San Diego State. They were one of the better teams in the nation and just very solid as an offensive player as well. Um, good playmaker. So, yeah, he, he's a guy that I, I think you could see being a possible, like, really solid um, backup point guard. And uh, for a team that needs, like, a combination of somebody that can shoot and possibly play a nice little role on both ends, Malachi Flynn could be somebody that you really look at. And I, th I still think there's a chance that he slips into the first round even. Yeah, he's one of those guys that, like, he could, he could be one of those, like, last four or five picks, you know, of the, of the first round. Yeah, or one of the first two picks of the second round. Yeah, because he's a, he's a super solid player. I mean, because, yeah, the two things, like, you're looking for in today's NBA is, like, he's great pick and roll. So, you know, he knows how to kind of handle, be a playmaker. And then he's got some three-point, you know, potential as well. So that, that's enough to kind of get you a role. And he's got, you know, experience coming from the Pac-12 as well before the Mountain West. And, you know, who would have thought that he'd, you know, have a great season in San Diego after leaving a beautiful place like Pullman, Washington. So I think that, I think that was a come up for him last year. Low blow. <laughs> Low blow. Pullman is beautiful. I've never been there. But, um, yeah, he, he was excellent this year. And he clearly was one of the better players in college basketball this season. Um, and yeah, I, I remember even seeing him at Washington State and being impressed. Like well, Washington like, State seems to always have like a few guys, even this year with like CJ Ellaby and yeah, year no, before no. with uh, Robert Franks, like just a couple really nice guys out of Washington State. And uh, we're hoping that the, the program gets a, a little added boost with uh, the new coaching situation as well. But um, yeah, not only was he um, – Consensus second team All America. He was Mountain West Player of the Year, of course, but he was Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year as a guard. Like that's that's good. That yeah, just that's shows good. the the kind of leadership role that he brought. And um, yeah, he he's a, in a draft that's pretty stacked on point guards. He's somebody that I, I think you should really look at taking a flyer on. And uh, for teams that need like that extra playmaker and that that little boost off of the bench. No, totally. And that's, that's like, it's a good role, you know, like to, to work yourself and, you know, into immediately. And I think he can, he's tough enough to like make it work. Yeah. Very early in his career. Like he's going to come good out. Good shooting indicators. Um, yeah. Tough, smart player. Um, so yeah, move on. Our next player, he is at number 34 on John Chepkevich's consensus big board. John, we're dropping your name a lot this podcast. Uh, hope you're listening, buddy. Um, and it is Grant Riller. And he's another guy that I, I think I, for one, have is a first round pick. He played for College of Charleston for four years, a little bit older than yeah, he's the 20, 23. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's on the older side of the draft, which doesn't but well. This the, the thing with him is you just get so much offensive firepower, ability to create off the bounce, and maybe the best slasher in the draft. Like most definitely, I, I think the best slasher right now. And then moving forward, you, it just seems like something that can definitely translate with him because he is a fantastic athlete with great strength as a guard. Yeah, no, his first, his first step is like, was probably one of the strongest in this, in this draft, you know, quick explosive, but you know, again, like older defense or also kind of his concern, like he wasn't a, super stout defender, you know, at college to Charleston. So it's yeah. like, he doesn't have a lot of indicators that he's going to be able to translate, you know, to be a good defender in the NBA. I mean, that's going to be a big. I think he's good laterally. It, you're just kind of wondering about the awareness. Like yeah. he, he certainly, it seems like he has some tools, but yeah, that, that is the big concern. It just seems like he might have the offensive ability that offsets that. Oh, totally. That, that, he, that, he's he, just like that huge scoring punch who, brings you so much off of that first contract. And then I, I just feel like he's a, a guy who's going to show enough on that first contract that will lead to a second contract. And I'm thinking as a second round guy, that that's somebody that I want to take a chance on. No, totally. Is it, is it like, he'll probably come into that kind of like energy off the bench role. And it's like, so he's not, 
it's not like he's going to be relied upon as as a defender so he can kind of have at least the benefits of like team defense yeah but I think you know offense is what's going to definitely get him get him on the court and probably like he's one of those guys if they put him in the G League like he's probably gonna, gonna put him yeah I think he'll kill the G League pretty, pretty good I think he'll do really really, really well in the G League he, I I just have a feeling he's going to find a way on the team is like that you know scorer off of the bench give you some playmaking as well good passer um he is just uh i think his indicators as a shooter are positive as well he he wasn't like a you know when you look at the small school guys and everything like that people look at like cj mccollum damian lillard we're not talking about that with grant very different player but definitely his finishing ability is something that they didn't have necessarily like entering the nba and um yeah he he's just a, a really unique player and somebody that I, I feel could find a, a, a role somewhere uh, right away. No, totally. And, it, you know, like, again, with shooting, it's like as long as the mechanics are kind of there, I mean, they can continue to build out. Well, I, like also like indication, like the fact that he yeah. shot over 80% from the line the last few years, the fact that he takes a lot of three-pointers. Um, yeah, but those are um, good indicators moving forward. And, yeah. Yeah, the one big – Downside with him is like it, if you're checking like Tankathon and all the weaknesses and everything, you uh, have draft age, and like that's about it. Like he's not a lot of glaring weaknesses for him there. Yeah, and in the, in the second round, I mean, it's not as you know the age I guess doesn't become as much as like the first round. You're like planning your franchise, you know, like in the lottery in those first few picks. Like you're really planning a long term plan. It's like, hey, if he can come and give you some good minutes for a couple of years, that's Super golden from second round. For sure. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's going to be drafted. I think there's still a chance he gets in the first round. Um, I took him to Utah in our mock draft where we went back and forth, and that was a, a much maligned pick, let's just say. But uh, I still have faith in him. And that's and a, and I, I still think that he can play a, a nice role. And then, like, he's a guy that you can play next to um, – either like a bigger guard who takes on like a more ball handling duty or a smaller guard. So yeah, I, I think there's still like some versatility to having him in your lineup as well. No, definitely. All right. Moving on. We have a Pac-12 player who was. Pac-12 defensive player of the year. Yeah. And just really stood out as a defensive player this year um, in many ways because he, he's a little undersized but really athletic and just seems to have a – at least gives a lot of effort, energy. Um, it kind of explodes off of the floor as well, and that's Tyler Bay. And yeah, Tyler Bay was – Tyler Bay out of Colorado just seems like a guy who – might go at the end of the, the first round, but could slip to the second. Right now, he is 35 on uh, the consensus big board. But, um, yeah, he, he was a guy that stood out to me. And the I noticed at the game he was playing Oregon, he didn't have the best game um, at Oregon. But he, um, he got into foul trouble. There were a few things going on there. But he um, – the one team that I saw prevalently there, I'm sure there were others, but uh, Oklahoma City. And he reminds you a little bit of Andre Roberson. And he, um, I think, is ha- has even more shooting potential. Like, he didn't shoot a lot. Yeah. That, that was the big it, thing. It's like the sample size is a little smaller. But, but you know, 6'7", seven, 7'1", seven, wingspan. He was getting seven, seven rebounds, one and a half steals, 1.2 blocks. Like, he's he's very – active defensively and I think that gets you that gets you a role I mean again you want your power forward to maybe be a little bit you know small forward power forward like 6'7 215 but it's like he has a role in the way the game is as someone who could just you know, I think he plays a little bigger as well like yeah. you know obviously with having the length definitely helps yeah he's he's not very tall but he just brings a, a really great energy and uh gets off the floor really quickly I think he also like has at least some passing potential. Like I, I wouldn't say he's an excellent passer, but 
yeah, he, he seems like a, one of those guys who is at least somebody that you can bring on the defensive end and can make a, a possible difference there. And then maybe it, if he has the ability to knock down that corner three, um, he sh- even showed like some ability to shoot off of movement. So yeah, th- there's still something there with him. And, you know, he's really good laterally. He um, is, you're not like having him necessarily guard like all your perimeter players, but it has potential there and brings a little versatility as a defender. No, def- definitely the ability to guard, you know, multiple, you know, some different positions. And I think defense is what's going to get him on the floor. And then if he refines his offensive game just a little bit, like that will keep him in the league. But I mean, the league's all over the place right now. I mean, you look at Houston, right? And they have like PJ Tucker at center. You know, if you get a guy that's big, tough, wants to, you know, be frustrating on defense. I mean, that that's, that's something that, you know, in spurts teams yeah. are using. PJ Tucker is also built like an absolute. Oh, he's a complete tank. So I, like, <laughs> I, I don't know about Tyler Bay in the PJ Tucker role, but like, I, I get it. Like you're, talking league, about, I mean, yeah. you're, you're giving the parallel of the, undersized quote unquote uh, player um who plays a little bit bigger and yeah and I, I like you know, you know, again, I think that's that a full time that's a full time athleticism time. and ability to defend even with the quote unquote like size issues let's say yeah but you know I think I think it's like a, that's a that's a short term you know kind of thing but it, I mean it's happening like like teams are going small and just playing playing that way and yeah. I think like yeah ultimately to me he's a four and um but at the same time like yeah the, just having that versatility and um I, I i just feel like he's a guy that could find a role and you uh could be pretty happy having a, out there do that that defensive ability and was at, at times like really good at getting to the free throw line um showed like some aggression as an offensive player it just was kind of hit or miss at, at times yeah, and I think the ability to like have the ball and like be dominant, I guess, probably wasn't something he was. No, no, no. But yeah, he was a great rebounder considering. And um, yeah, he was like, seemed to be one of the best defenders in college basketball this past year. But could have had something to do with the system, certainly, but it just seems like that's his calling card. And I think uh, he is. Likely, I, I like. It seems like the signs are that he impressed quite a few teams this year and uh, has a has a chance to go into first round. Um, but I think would be a, a nice gamble in the second round. Oh, totally, definitely. Like at the at the beginning of the second round, I feel like those are you get good value because he'll be able to come in and contribute something to your team immediately. Another Pac-12 guy that I got to see live this year and. He may go last out of the freshman, the much uh, acclaimed freshman class, but he may go last out of them. He was actually Pac-12 freshman of the year. It was not an award that I felt he should have won, Yeah, but you could see why he was in the thick of things. And he had a really good season. Like I I felt he he played well. He put on a bunch of weight, like – He was really skinny throughout AAU play and he put on a lot of good weight and was a really like pretty solid on the glass. Um, At least not like the the greatest defender, but held his own on that end and um, really, really good around the basket and show even showed like some shooting touch didn't take a ton, but I think there, there's a possibility that he ends up extending his range and was known like as kind of, not necessarily like a stretch player, but somebody that could at least step out a little bit. And uh, that's Zeke Naji out of Arizona. He um, was from Minnesota. He made the McDonald's All-American game, was probably one of the lesser known guys there. He's not necessarily like the longest player, um, but I think he's like a legit six foot 10, maybe six foot 11. And he, um, yeah, there, there were times this year where he just really kind of put a hurting on some people down low. No, he's got a, he's got a lot of potential. No, their list, yeah, the listings I've seen are all like in that 6'10", 6'11", and then like 240-ish. Yeah, yeah, 
like he's probably you know done hopefully done some things to his body you know since he moves pretty well like i i was pretty impressed with uh his movement like even the possibility of defending in space and not looking completely terrible um I don't think that's going to be his calling card necessarily. He's not like the greatest rim protector. Yeah, it's like it's like rebounds. Like rebounds is where he makes an impact. Within blocking, he he got, like he's not like a great shot blocker, and that's kind of you know it's a time like it's kind of almost a timing skill that you know it's hard to develop. Yeah. But I think if he can just be like defensively tough, and he also kind of had a little bit of a like some turnover issues as well, like just ball control. Mm-hmm. And you know that's that, that might be just you know Arizona also had some some games where they were kind of a little all, like all over the place as well, yeah. but like, just seemed like end of games with them were, was an issue at times. Yeah, so just like that, that kind of consistency because again, like if if you're coming off the bench for me and you're coming into my game and you're turning the ball over, it's like probably yeah. not gonna you're probably I'm not probably not going to want to depend on you that much. But he was still – he was really important for them. Oh, totally. And, and um, he's, 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 you know, coming out as a freshman, has, you know, has some potential, has, a, has some hope. And, like, yeah, if he can kind of, again, work on a little bit of range because that's, that's kind of just – He only took 17 three-pointers, but he was 76% from the line. Which is, which is good. Like, I mean, yeah, you can – Yeah, you, yeah. His shot certainly, like, it looks good. And I, I think he'll have the ability to stretch it out. Um, but yeah, he's not a guy that you expect to come into the league and oh, he's not, uh, like, knock down shots. It's right gonna now. take him like a yeah, it's gonna take him like a year or two until I. For a while, his like field goal percentage too was ridiculous. Like he just wasn't missing. Yeah, and, well, just, uh, yeah. I, I I feel throughout Pac-12 play like it kind of caught up a little bit. He still finished like shooting really well from the field. Yeah, fifty-seven percent, and then true shooting percentage was. Uh, 63%. So, yeah, really good. Um, yeah, so he, he's a big man that I, I think is at best you're kind of looking maybe at your like third big man and kind of, uh, to bring a bit, bit of energy and then hopefully some offensive ability. Um, and I, I think that it's a, certainly a possibility he fills that role. No, totally. And I think, I think we're, we're lucky. Like a lot of these guys are, you know, lucky in this day and age too, with like the two way contracts and the fact that, well, we don't know what the G league is going to be like next year, but like there is a chance for them to, to professionally develop yeah. while under, while under a contract. So, you know, like you can have him, you know, part of your organization. Cause even that, like whatever talk of all had, like, isn't it like the exhibit? Exhibit 10. Yeah, it's a ten. Like, so you can do a lot of things like that to like keep guys kind of in your org that you're you're tell you know you're impressed with, and have them kind of come up a little bit. Led Arizona freshman in scoring, and uh, was named. I, I kind of boggled my mind because there was, I felt Onyeka Okongwu definitely deserved that award, and was probably like. I feel the best freshman in the nation this year was Onyeka Kongwu. Um, but yeah, Zeke certainly made all Pac-12 team and along with Onyeka and Isaiah Stewart even. And um, yeah, he, he's somebody that um, I think has gained like a little bit slept on as a draft prospect. Um, yeah, I, I just seems like first round buzz with him has kind of died down and um yeah, he's somebody that might be like a nice little development player for a big um, in the second round. That's what Moving on, we have a guy who I think like put up some pretty ridiculous defensive numbers this year. And for the past few years, just has a lot of potential on that end. The shot doesn't look good. It hasn't been great, but he, it seems like he at least has a pretty decent free throw percentage. Like the last two years, he is around like 76% um, from the free throw line. And that is Paul Reed out of DePaul. And they had a really nice start to the year. Did not end well. <laughs> it was a tough ending to the year. But he's a guy who averaged – 2.6 blocks per game, 1.9 steals per game. So kind of like a, that stocks monster. And uh, 
percentage wise, yeah, three point three steal percentage for a guy who is going to be playing big in the NBA, and then a nine point seven block percentage has a I think about a seven foot two um, wingspan. Really nice athlete and just quite fluid. He's somebody that I, I think is entirely slept on in this draft class, and it. He's, he's another guy who I, I think could go quite a bit higher than predicted. He's 38 on uh, the consensus big board and um, is a guy that I, I just feel is going to find an energy role somewhere because of his ability to play defense. And then you just hope that if he has any ability to stretch that range or even like I, I think can at least provide some garbage buckets, he, he could be a, a playable backup big. No, he's a guy that, yeah, near near the basket, you know, obviously it's his ideal zone right now. But, yeah, like, he basically is a rebounding person, rebounding that kind of energy. Like, he's already said, I saw, like, I was reading an interview with him. He does want to – he thinks he's going to lead – or he wants to lead all rookies in rebounding. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of coming in with a little bit of that mentality because he was getting, like, almost 10.7, so just under, like, 11 rebounds yeah. to go along with, the, you know, the, the steals blocks. It's like, that's a good defensive presence, you know, 6-9 – 220 right now, you know, puts on a little bit of, you know, weight gets a little bit bigger. I mean, that's someone that can come and start just set some screens, get some rebounds. Like, that gets you that gets you on the floor. Yeah. He was young for a junior also. He, he's only 21 years old. And his dad, his dad was a pro too. His dad played overseas. So he's got some, you know, like professional pedigree in, in his family. I've heard some good things just about him as a person as well. And, yeah, he's – um. He's somebody that I think is – I don't know. I, like, I, I think I might even take a, a flyer on him at, like, the end of the first round if I were a few teams. Um, with, like, a, a rebound focus, like, that is your soul. Like, that's a good yeah. – yeah. A defensive focus. But, yeah, like, that's just a yeah. good toughness persona that I want on, you know, on yeah. my team. Like, the, I think if you're averaging as many steals per game and blocks per game as Paul Reed – you have to have some ability on that end of the floor. Yeah, of course, of course. Because he's not giving it, you know, necessarily back to you on the offense. But again, you don't – he's he's that fifth guy. You have the other four guys that you want to, you know, facilitate or, you know, shoot or spread. And then he's that guy that just stays inside, you know, sets, sets some good screens and just goes hard on the boards. Yeah. And you keep bringing that up, like, where, like, the fifth guy doesn't have to do shit on offense. And I, I'm not necessarily with that, man. I mean, like, it, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> you see it on some teams, though. It's like, one guy is, you are right that one guy is not necessarily going to score. It's, it's proficient. I'm not saying, like, they're terrible. Most, most, most likely. <laughs> yeah, there's the guy that you just, like, literally. You want as many proficient players on the court as possible because of that course. just opens up the offense for you so much. But sometimes sometimes you just need someone that comes in and shoves, shoves other people around for a couple, you know, a like couple series. But it's just the kind of thing that's, like, unfortunately, there's a lot of centers that, like, aren't going to be dependable, reliable. That's just not ever going to be there. You know, these guys are big, I'm not going to say like clumsy, but like they're just big dudes that, you know, very strong. It's like they're not going to shoot the three ever, but it's like they can just come in and fill a role for a bit. Mm -hmm. We have our next player. We have a, I, I went with three like definite centers in a row. (laughs) <laughs> and um, our next guy is actually one freshman of the year for the nation. And it, it's not crazy that he won this award. Like he was, five star, I, I five recruit, you know, five-star recruit as well. Yeah. But beyond like, who cares where, like, uh, I guess on Yeka was on the ledge of being five stars and he, he was, the best freshman in no, but it, people, it just you know like it's again it's not the make or breaker but it's just like it tells that people see something in you yeah. at, at some point down the line and he, he was consensus second team all-american um yeah one usbwa freshman of the year um was all acc first team acc freshman of the year um the player we're talking about is vernon carey and I Gary Jr. by the way, because Vernon yeah, Senior is Vernon his dad, former offensive lineman from the U as well as the Miami Dolphins, like big part of those early two thousands Miami teams. And he he like he has pretty soft feet. Like that, that's the thing that I've always at least on the offensive end. 
<laughs> Defensively, yeah. so th- this is this is where Vernon Carey. Th- there are many schools of thought on Vernon Carey. He, did he have one of the most impressive freshman years of anybody in college? Absolutely. Like he he was one of the best freshmen in college this year. I, I think it's hard to take that away from him. Did he answer the questions that? said, okay, this guy is like a lottery pick or anything like that. No, he did not because defensively there are still concerns. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's, a heavier, it's a heavier feat on defense, basically, because you're looking yeah. – you know, he's one of the few, obviously, true centers. Kind of, you know, there's not that many in the draft, but it's like, yeah, are, are you going to be able to come out and switch in a pick and roll? No, and, and so yeah. few big men are. That, no, that's totally, the, totally. But, you know, it's like yeah. you'd love to see it. Like that would just be yeah. – that's what gets you into the, you know, the true top of the draft. Because his, his block percentage wasn't terrible. And like, so th- there's still hope there. I don't think he's going to be a great rim protector in the NBA. He's not necessarily, um, he's not very long. He, he, I think at most like seven foot and like a half or seven one wingspan. Um, yeah, not like, not ideal center size. He's definitely big and strong. He's like 6'10", like, I'm guessing it has to be in the 270 range. Yeah, he, um, you know, some of those old, like, University of Miami, like, offensive line, you know, friends of his dad, I mean, I'm sure he could put on some weight pretty pretty quickly if that was ever. Oh, used. you don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> he's a guy you don't worry about putting on weight. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, Genetically, that's he's a big uh, guy. Yeah. Like, his, his conditioning was, like, you – honestly, he, at some points, I think he was somewhere in the 285, like, 290 range. But he's, yeah, he's not, he's not a guy that you worry about strength-wise. But um, you maybe a little bit conditioning-wise, it, it's just in his role, he's probably not going to be asked to play too many minutes. And this year at Duke, like when he was on the floor, he was putting up numbers. Um, but yeah, I think he, yeah, he averaged 25 minutes per game. Like you ultimately would have loved to have had him out there more. I think a couple reasons, and one is the defense and the other is conditioning. And, um, yeah, and, like, obviously Duke has a pretty crowded roster as well. Um, oh, but Vernon is – he was second among freshmen in box plus minus behind Onyeka. He um, had, like, this enormous PER also. So, like, putting up – PER is not the end-all, be-all, but it just shows that he, when he's on the court, he's putting up numbers. And he's he was doing a lot – you kind of wondered about his rebounding. Like, I, I just wonder about that at times. In college, he crushed it. Like, he was killing on the boards. He, he almost had a, a 20% rebound percentage, which is, like, that's yeah. awesome. He was 19.2. Um, so you, you wonder, the reason he, I think, is likely to slip to the second round is you wonder about the archetype. And he... Um, is one of those guys, this is a guy, I think the guy where you're like, oh, if this was 10 years ago, he'd be a lottery pick. Absolutely. But if you look at the guys like him 10 years ago, how many of them stuck around and played up to lottery level? Um, there, there are concerns there. I think he's a really talented offensive player, though. Yeah, no, good, and, good, good soft hands. Like, you can give yeah. it to him in the post. Yeah, for sure. He didn't shoot a lot, and then the free throw percentage is another thing. But I'd seen him practice and like just the footwork uh, from him shooting. And I still think there's a chance that he ends up being at least able to stretch a little bit. And he, um, man, like he even has like some handle to him, but and obviously he's not a guy you're right. You're off. Like, yeah. But, it's but not he, uh, I, so when he came here for Les Schwab, there were just moments where they just literally handed it to Vernon dribbled the whole court. I remember one time he like puts it behind his back and like gets around somebody and just throws down. Um, so yeah, he, certainly he, he's a load. He's tough to stop. Um, if I think there's still a place in the league for somebody like Vernon Carey, if they can shoot. And I think there's a chance that Vernon Carey ends up shooting. Um, so yeah, he's he's not somebody who's going to solve all your woes as a big man, but I wouldn't like. I don't think you should be completely bummed out if your team drafts Rooney Carey. I, I still think there's like a little bit of upside there, 
and especially in the second round if your team gets Bernie no, Carroll. That's why in the like, second, in the second yeah. round, I mean, it's 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 all possible reward. I mean, risk really isn't as much of a factor. You yeah. well, you still want a viable player. No, you want a viable player, but I'm just saying it's not like oh, we, we you want you want. You ultimately want somebody who's not out of the league after like their first couple of years. Of, co- of course, but it's like if they are, it's not like oh, we invested so much, you know, in them. We had like all this hope. You, you obviously you want. I'm on the fence about that one. <laughs> I'm on the fence about that take, but um, yeah, I, I I think that uh, Vernon's a guy who could possibly make it to a second contract. Yeah, no, because he's and, a stere- he's a stereotypical center. Like he's yeah. traditional NBA center, and then maybe even be a guy that you don't have to pay like exorbitant amounts to on a second contract. Um, you get a viable big man. Yeah, I, I, I think there's there's a chance he can play, and I I, I think yeah, it, early in the second round, I, I think that's probably worth a shot. Um, the next player, who is ranked right after Vernon in. John Chepkevich's consensus big board is um, Killian Tilly. And um, he was a really good four-year player at Gonzaga. Had lots of injury issues, yeah, unfortunately. That's, that's, the big, not, that's the big thing in yeah. why, he's, why he's at this part of the conversation versus that first like, right. conversation. Is just, only, he, just he, his first two years at Gonzaga, he played 69 games. His last two years, he plays a combined 39 games. And, um, yeah, he um, – that that's the thing with him. He also has kind of like a – I think he got measured with like a six, seven and a half wingspan, so he kind of has like these little – They listed like six, nine, six, ten, yeah. Like, yeah. And um, – but, yeah, he's – the thing that you notice about when you're watching Killing Tilly is he's a fantastic basketball player. Oh, totally. And, uh, and he, he's and a he, really good shooter. And he's he a straight four. Great decisions. He's yeah. a straight four, which is like yeah, deal. And that's what's going to get him. And then he, he's smart defensively, too. Like, he just seems to know where to be on the floor. Really, and he's like a good athlete. He moves really well. He, his brother, I think, one of his brothers, I think, played uh, pro basketball. And another was like a volleyball player. He played a lot for France and youth levels and looked great there. Um, came to Gonzaga was a nice factor off the bench that first year, then was moved into the starting lineup and like he was dynamite. And I thought this year he was great. Like he looked really, really good. Yeah, totally shooting shooting the ball. Like I mean he was he was when the Ducks played him, you know, like he was Yeah. Pretty tough. I, I I think passing the ball is like yeah. another huge thing with him though. And um yeah he almost a two to one assist to turn over this year. Um and then you can like legitimately stretch the floor. Like yeah, no, that, he, that, he's a guy that you're actually you're not concerned about when it comes to shooting. Oh no, pick and pick and pop. He wasn't the best uh, free throw shooter, but I, I just think he can shoot. And that's that's the that's the role. That's what's gonna get you yeah. know get him on. Is forty four percent from three over uh, his college career. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the guy can legitimately shoot. Has some athletic ability. Um, not the longest guy, not like the most physically um, intimidating, but he's, he's smart. He, he really knows how to play. And um, I, I, I think he's, he's going to hold his own defensively. And I think he's a guy that immediately can come in and at least has that role as a shooter. Um, it gives you the passing ability as well. So it can do at least a, a couple things really well. And um, it, like sets really good screens too, so he um, is somebody that I think, if you know injuries notwithstanding, he's still somebody that I think a team should just give a chance to and uh, see how it works out. Like he he's a guy who I actually believe like if you give the chance to him, then you don't have much to lose. But yeah, because well, also he's, he's somebody that can provide a rotation spot. He's the first, he's a first round type talent. Just injuries are are his red flag, which sucks. I mean, because yeah. hopefully that's not a you know a long term problem for him. But then you know that's just obviously what you know his history is. But yeah, hopefully he gets a good you know second round chance on a team that you know knows how to use him and just stretch the floor, let him shoot, let him make some plays offensively. Mm-hmm. And really good at like the short roll, pick and pop, 
Um, yeah, and good touch. He's somebody that I really like. And um, yeah, you're, I think you're absolutely right in terms of like first round talent because of the skill set. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still set, yeah. It's so like, you know, like everything is, everything is there. It's just like, you know, of course it's like, well, is he going to get hurt? Yeah. And it just, it's, it's, it sucks. No, and, that, and that's what's going to cause him to slip. But yeah, he should be somebody that is most definitely taken. I, like, I think high in the second round, if he goes undrafted, then some team is likely getting a stud for at least a few years. No, totally. He's, he's if, definitely. If, if, if they find out what's wrong with him and the injuries aren't as serious as, um, is believed, then yeah, they could be getting a, a rotation piece there. Oh no, yeah, if he goes undrafted, he'd be my first call for a two-way contract. <laughs> yeah, like, I, would, I would call him like immediately. I'd, ha- I'd have his number saved for sure. And moving on, we have. I think this guy is one of the best shooters in the draft. Um, he didn't necessarily like shoot percentage-wise out of the world this year, but just how many different ways that he can shoot. And then um, also the fact that he's a, a very smart player and knows how to read the game as well. Um, Isaiah Joe. Isaiah Joe came out of the gates firing as a freshman at Arkansas um, and then came back this past year. Um, didn't necessarily have the season that one would expect. He was – I feel uh, – almost like a, a little bit outshone by um, another player on Arkansas, Mason Jones, who I, the athleticism fr- threshold with Mason Jones is what really worries you. But the, yeah, with Joe, it's that he um, has some ball skills and has an ability to not only shoot exceptionally well off of the catch, but even like he has crazy deep range. Yeah, and that, then um, yeah, yeah he, he can even shoot off of the dribble as well. No, he's got a, he's got a good like compact you know kind of shooting motion, and you know Arkansas had a good guard lineup going on, but yeah, that gets you on the court. I mean, deep deep range, good you know someone that can catch and shoot. He's six five, so he's not like you know he can be like a true yeah. kind of shooting good shooting guard size. Mm-hmm. He he's like a guy that when you look at a team that has maybe like a a jumbo initiator or somebody who's constantly kicking out for three pointers. Isaiah Joe is one of those guys you want to plug in there. Like, yeah, you want to, you want to he, he's there. one of those reliable shooters who the Lakers wish they had on a more consistent basis. Yeah, he's got the- and that, that's why so many, I, I feel like so many mock drafts I see have Isaiah Joe going 28 uh, to the Lakers. Um, no, that's what the, that's, they just need guys that can, yeah, they can get yeah. that kick out. No, I, I think he's like one of the biggest no brainers as far as, just that goes. I understand that, you know, there could be physical concerns because um, yeah, well, then, I, the one thing I do want to point out is Arkansas never seems to update their weights on players, like just on their site in general. So that, it's a little annoying um, <laughs> when a guy comes into college, at, you know, 6'5", 170 and leaves at 6'5", 170 without that really being the case. But yeah, Isaiah Joe is a skinny guy. Like that, it's, he's he definitely is going to have to uh, adjust to NBA physicality. I know that's like a common thing that people say, but yeah. well, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt him defensively. But, but yeah, but his just his ability, how easily he seems to shoot the ball, and then on like absurd volume, he was also at like eighty nine percent free throw percentage this year, and like got to the line a bit too. So, yeah, he, he's a guy that I, I think isn't completely afraid of contact, um, can score off of movement as well. And um, he is, it's like, one of the elite shooters in this draft. Desmond Bain is, I think, maybe, like, the only guy that you would rank in front of Isaiah Joe just when it comes to, like, pure shooters. And the reason you don't include Aaron Neesmith in this conversation is because Aaron Neesmith does it off the catch. These guys both can do it off of the bounce and off the catch. Yeah, no, that's a, like that's that's totally like it's such a good spot right now. You see so many players that are just filling this role of just like get the kick out, shoot. That's yeah. that is your your focus. Job. I mean, I think yeah, like and then also like you know, it seems like he could uh, add something defensively. It seems like he he has really good instincts on that end as well. Yeah, no, totally. I think 
I think you'd be, you know, they're, yeah, you look at a lot of teams, it's like they, they need that role filled. For sure. Moving on. This is our second to last player. We have a special surprise for our last player. Don't want to get your hopes up too much, but he's a, he's a special player, our last guy. Um, if you don't know who it is, then uh, you probably don't know us. Yeah, you probably don't know us very well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That's why you should keep like, watching, the, like, watching or listening to the show, so then you, you could learn. Yeah. And no, you'll learn more about this guy and then more about the team that he uh, plays for in college. We're, we've got a lot going forward. Our second to last choice is a player that I feel is like severely underranked and um, is somebody that I, I feel is going to get drafted, has ability to play on both ends and smart player as well. Tyshawn Alexander out of Creighton. And Creighton was a fun team this year. Like they were really fun. And Tyshawn's a baller. Like he's – Definitely seems to be more of like an off guard guy and he, he doesn't have the most size or anything like that. And I, I had a chance to see him um, at when he played for Oak Hill a few times, I got to see him at the Les Schwab Invitational and um, Oak Hill had four guards and it was uh, Lendell Wigginton who ended up going to Iowa state, Matt Coleman, who's in Texas, um, Devontae Schuler who is at Ole Miss, and Tyshawn. And damn, were they all really good. Like, yeah, obviously, like Division I talented guys. Um, I was actually lowest on Tyshawn as a high school player, probably taking too much into account. One, I, I felt like Matt Coleman's uh, passing, um, and then I, I felt like he would at least improve his shot. Lindell was – like the alpha of the group and was the best scorer and really good athlete. Uh, Devonte, I just thought was a really good defender and d just a little bit more athletic than Tyshawn. But Tyshawn had a, a great skill set, like ability to, um, you know, do things off of the dribble, um, like smart off a of ball as well. And he was a good defender. He's a smart defender. Well, and and in college, he's definitely ready to contribute. Like he's yeah. he's ready to come in and, and you know play some play some good defense. Yeah. And yeah, he was all big East first team this past year. Um he, really like he defended a lot of guards in the Big East really well and just in college basketball in general. Uh yeah, man, that would have been a really fun team to see in March. And uh yeah, his Shooting always shot pretty well. And this year, for instance, was uh, close to 40% from three and 86% from one. Um, those, are good, those are good numbers. And I think like, yeah. he's, it's three and D. Like that's, that's his role. Yeah. But, and like as also like an off guard, he's not necessarily like the greatest decision maker and wasn't a guy that, you know, you just handed the keys to your offense to. But he still has that like offensive skill set where you feel there there could be something to build on there. No, definitely. Like, yeah, and I think he's a I think he's a good tough player. Yeah. That's all you have for Tyshawn? <laughs> I, I didn't get a chance. Like, I mean I've I've watched some video and stuff like that. I didn't get a chance to watch that much Creighton games this past year, unfortunately. Damn it, man. You know who who's also a fun player on that team was uh, Marcus Zagorowski, who is Michael Carter Williams' little bro. Oh. And um, I don't know if you remember, but we, we watched him. Um, I think he was with Expressions Elite, I want to say, out of Massachusetts. And he had an older brother who was taller than him and not close to as good. Huh. And yeah, Marcus was just draining shots. And like he looked really good to me uh, playing for that team. And I was like, man, like, you know, whatever college gets him pretty lucky, ends up being Creighton. And he and Tyshawn were a really fun guard duo this past year. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like Tyshawn showed enough where he's a guy that you should run to if he's on as a two-way and still think there's a chance that he gets drafted as well. 
Um, and then finally, you better have some things to say about him, man. I don't want to carry. I got a lot to say about this guy. <laughs> um, he is ranked forty fifth on the consensus big board. Pac twelve player of the year. Consensus first team All American. Leader. Big shot maker. Owns Four the, years of uh, winning the Oregon State title. Winning the Pac-12 outright this year. Um, three-time Oregon State player of the year in high school. He saved his best for last this year. He was, he was fantastic. And we're talking about Peyton Pritchard. Jason, what does Peyton Pritchard mean to you? I obviously great, great leader. But what he did this year, his senior year is like, he added that range, like just that extra, oh, yeah. that extra degree. Just like he's not shooting three pointers on the line. Like he, he's that guy that again, you need to, you need to guard him as soon as he crosses half court because anything is, you know, within, you know. You know what I won't say, You know what I don't. I don't think that he added the range. I think he had that. I think he added the confidence. Yeah, take, but he has some inconsistencies like his sophomore junior, junior year. But he's a, he's a guy that. But you, I think a lot of that was confidence. I, I, I think a lot of that was confidence, some of it role. Um, well, he's, he's someone that, you know, obviously at Oregon, he had 40 teammates in, in four years. So like, basically every year he was there, there's, like, full roster turnover except for him. No, but that's college. That's co- that, that, no, that's college basketball in this day and age, too, like, totally. But it's, like, that's a, that's a lot. But, no, he's, he was a guy, you know, started day one for the Ducks. Yeah. You know, just a, a good, final four team on you. Yeah. And he's just a good, like, he's a good shooter. He's tough. Definitely. And I think, like, you know, his, 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 you know, areas, obviously, it's like, again, he's not the most athletic guy. Like, he's not going to jump over you, dunk over you, but that's not his game. I think defense. I was always, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the thing I was always really impressed with Peyton about is it seems like he, constantly would even when he was in these high school camps and playing for different teams it, it seemed like he would play up to the level of his competition and I, I have to tell the story of uh, sophomore Peyton Pritchard a guy that no NBA scout in the gym I think really knew about going into that point plays for the Portland Generals that which is the team that goes up against Team USA gets on the floor and immediately is making things happen against uh, Tyus Jones, who has, I, I think, was in his um, fifth, sixth year in the NBA. And, um, yeah, he uh, at the time was about to, to go to Duke. And at the end, you'd say, like, oh, Tyus got, like, a little bit better of him. But nobody made the impact that Peyton Pritchard did that night. Very few guys, you know, obviously – Later on, you have Kevin Porter Jr. Um, in his legendary Portland General game. But he, uh, Peyton looked really good there. Comes back that next year, doesn't necessarily look as great. And then senior year makes a team. Um, and then I, I was able to see him at like Adidas Nations. And I, I just remember him scoring like 14 points in like a half in the final game. His team ends up losing. And he was just pissed off he didn't play more. He's like, man, I was like hot going into the that's why he's a, he's a, he's a half. you know and, like uh, yeah. experience of like of, of knowing him too like seeing him up close like he's a fiery player like he's very you know oh man he's got the he's got the burning drive he's got the he's got the passion and like i hope for him like i hope for him very much that he gets you know a good nba chance to you know come in back up point guard i think defensively there are concerns no nope, most course. definitely <laughs> That's, and, yeah. that, that's why he's, he's at this point of the draft. Because, I mean, yeah. shooting, I, shooting, he's there. He's not an yeah. above-the-rim player. But, you know, there are some point oh, guards. Shooting, in the league like, that yeah, you have confidence. Obviously was able to um, make shots off the bounce and, you know, really good off the catch as well. Um, showed deep range. Was able to create, like, he, he's a good ball handler. Straight up. Um, not the greatest decision maker. But still, you know, has some ability there as well. Um, you wonder, he, like, he's fast. He's just not incredibly vertically explosive. Yeah. 
um, you know, by NBA standards. And he um, defensively, like, yeah, he, he wasn't asked to do a ton. Um, and at times, like, may have, like, kind of died on ball. And I, I feel like he does some of his best work, like, just kind of getting into passing lanes and, and stuff like that. Like, he always was able to get quite a few steals and ma make some plays happen on that end. Um, the thing I was really impressed with, too, this year that I want to give a shout out to is like times he was able to like put people in the rim, which that was not something that he necessarily did too often in the past. And uh, like Michigan, Xavier Simpson, he just like sunned him. And that's one of the, totally. the guy who was getting, he was one of the finalists for defensive player of the year. And uh, I guess they weren't watching the Oregon game, but man, like Peyton sunned him in that game. No, and he does it. He does it. Like he is, Obviously, yeah. his dad, his dad was a former football player for University of Oklahoma. Like, he's yeah. tough. And with, with Peyton, able to make tough shots, but has to take a lot of tough shots. That, that's the thing. Like, his efficiency this year was amazing based on the fact of how many tough shots he took. But he, he still, like, I, I feel like he has the ability to create, um, showed the strength to shoot from deep. And he... Um, is a guy that I think is going to work like that. That's always something I remember. I, I was the, one of the first media members to get to the gym at nations. And the two guys who were already there were Peyton and buddy healed. And this is at the time where Peyton buddy was going into his senior year at Oklahoma and Peyton had like decommitted from Oklahoma, but I guess they were still cool, which is nice. And uh, hopefully buddy vouches for him. I'm not sure how much swing buddy healed has in Sacramento. But yeah. um, and honestly, I, I love Peyton Pritchard, and so I also don't want him to go to Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, I like, want Peyton Pritchard actually to go anywhere. <laughs> I'm not I want Peyton Pritchard to be in the NBA and have a chance. I think he's going to, if he gets to the G League, like that's a guy that you're going to oh, be he's happy totally. with as a G League coach. Oh, totally. Um, but yeah, I still, I still have some friends who remember Peyton Pritchard from Hoop Summit, and. <laughs> I just really dig that whole thing. And uh, if you watch Peyton Pritchard this year, the guy, the guy was ball. He was one oh, of the best in college basketball. Um, was, I mean, again, like high school, four-time state champion as well. Like, hey, Kevin Love didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Again. <laughs> like, that's, Kevin that's, won three state player of the years? Probably. Probably did, but he, he only won that one. He only won the state championship. Was big, I was there. Only his junior year. We were year. both there. We were both there at that one. That was... That was good. But yeah, well, no, there, you were there during the uh, sophomore year where you lost to Jesuit, right? I was at. I was not at that game. I was at like the semifinal games, and then I went back to Portland that weekend. I watched it on TV, but I was I was there the, his sophomore year, and then G, junior year was pretty good. The senior yeah. year, where it's North Medford, which had Kyle Singler, who was going to you know South going Medford, to, bro. Oh, South Medford. Sorry, North Eugene won the five A. South Medford six. My bad. Yeah. First. But yeah, that was like an epic, epic game. And unfortunately, Kevin did not come out. But he did better the year before when they brought all those ringers. <laughs> so that's what he was Oh, man, about. when they had, the, they had a point guard. Yeah, they took the cross. I think it was Vince guard. Thomas, and then he had a, a big guy next to him, too, that really helped out. Yeah, just, just for context, in Lake Oswego, Oregon, there's Lake Oswego and Lake Ridge, you know, two schools, rivals, very close, you know, proximity. And Lake Oswego, where Kevin Love played, took the point guard from Lake Ridge. And that's what gave, like, Kevin what he needed. Because he, like, the year before, he basically had... Man, it helped. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, he got this point guard. And then they, they took this other kid from, like, Hillsborough, which is, like, you know, a little bit outside of, you know, that area. And he was, like, a big, you know, another big guy to take the pressure off Kevin. Like, that was, like, his best, best, like, year Lake Oswego. That was definitely... Nice, nice to be, like, a, on a local team and have, like, a little help. Because yeah. so often the guys that play for local teams, like who are at Kevin Love's level, don't necessarily have that. South Medford was – man, Kyle was lucky. Kyle Singler played with a, a point guard named Mike Harthen. Who – ended up a committee to Washington State. He ended up at – uh, He was the um, tournament uh, most outstanding player, I think. He was great. He, yeah, he was great. And then they had a young – Injured shooting hand and shoots five for five from three. Unreal. And then also, if you're if you're an Oregon basketball fan as well, EJ, young EJ Singler, young EJ, you know he was and then, like 
they had about five or six guys who looked like Kyle and were like a little bit. Oh, cool. there's like 12. Just a little. There's like 12 singlers on that team. Yeah. Because I think they had like a cousin that was. They had a cousin. They had they like a cousin and then yeah. like, you know, like that. That's a lot. But, you know, also on Lake Oswego, they also had Rick Adelman's son who didn't play at all, but he was just the guy that was like very pumped up to be there. He pumped up the jam. Yeah, I just remember he was like the guy, you know, it's like when the starting lineup comes out, he's just the guy that's like, yeah. Had the special handshake with everybody. That, yeah, that I, think he's like, I, don't, I don't think they did that there. I think he just did a lot of the yeah stuff. As, like, as they talk about on Saturday Night Live when they talked about the Cleveland Cavaliers with LeBron, he does the pick and roll. That's where he would pick up Kevin Long's laundry and roll it on over to his house. Indeed. That's what I that's what I think of with some of the guys. But back back to Peyton, like love him. I I hope for the best for him in this in this draft process. I know he's been working out. I think he was actually just in Southern California here working out. He was in like San Diego area, Manhattan Beach. So yeah, I quite a few workouts last year too for um, teams before he he put his name in last year. Um, yeah, because yeah. like why why not? Tested the waters. Yeah, tested the waters and made. I think the absolute right decision coming back. I think he would have had very little chance to get drafted last year. This year, I I think it's a lot. What I think for him declaring last year too, it's like go you know, get the get the evaluation, get the feedback. Because like, what what do you, what do you what do you have to lose? And it's like he came back this year like super super focused. Yeah, I think you froze, my man. Oh, sorry, but I'm just sorry. saying like you know declaring he had nothing to lose. Did you freeze or did I freeze? I think you're for, you're the one that's freezing on me, but we're gonna right. we're, we're gonna make it through these technical these technical times. This is what we're we deal with in in these days in nature too. But yeah, I think testing the waters was good because it, it let him see what it takes, mm -hmm. see what he needs to provoke. Because like he came in senior year, yeah, he was laser focused. It almost reminded me like a little bit, not completely, but the trajectory of kind of like Aaron, Aaron Brooks as well, former Oregon point guard, where it's like. Freshman year, you know, he's starting, shows, shows some, you know, a lot of promise, kind of struggles his sophomore, junior year with like, still, still the, you know, arguably the best player on the team, but, you know, struggles with some consistencies and, you know, things like that. And then senior year, just like laser, just super focused, super tight, like unstoppable. Cause I remember like Aaron Brooks, like his junior year, sophomore, junior year, we were in Portland and he was playing, playing Illinois and Illinois had like deep Brown, I think. Darren Williams had just left, but like they still had a really good team. And, you know, they're playing in Portland at the, at the Blazers, you know, court and you have that NBA three point line. And I remember Aaron pulls up for an NBA three and it's like, not even close. <laughs> like, it's just like one of those things you're like, but then he, you know, that, you know, that was earlier. And then, you know, he, he kept working, kept working on his game. And then his senior year, he's hitting those shots. And then obviously when he made it in the league, he proved that he could hit that NBA three. And I think like Peyton yeah. kind of, you know, gained that confidence. And also, it's just he just great, great dude, good player. Aaron also the one thing that Aaron had like that I was always very impressed with, like ridiculous top end speed. Oh, oh, oh of course. Like, he, was, he, was, he was like an absurd athlete. <laughs> different players, but I think like the career trajectory of just like you know as an Oregon basketball fan, like showing tons of promise, you know, but then struggling a little bit, you know in between and then like ending on like the yeah. hot note possible. Yeah, I, think, I, I think there are similarities in the way that their uh, Oregon career went. For sure. Yeah, because I remember Aaron, you know, the end of Aaron Brooks' junior year as well. Like, I remember there's rumors that he was going to drop out of school yeah. and go back to Seattle. And because I, I remember I had a class with him, he was mysteriously absent for the rest of the term. And it was just like, you know, the, the, those kind of things were kind of just going around. And then it's Doing like, online classes, man. <laughs> I mean, I... It, if he was more power to him but yeah it's just like you know there's all those rumors flying and then his senior year he did like the opposite of what the other you know like he could have dropped out and you know gone to you know university of seattle or like played down you know his last year just to be close to home kind of thing but just he, front, bro. yeah but love love aaron brooks as well he's he's another another player we had um a great experience with him as well that i can i can share with everybody uh we were at the University of Oregon Recreation Center. We were we were playing playing basketball, just shooting around, Michael, Michael and I, and you know, a couple friends. And you know, the ducks were scrimmaging on the other court because this was during the summer. They like they weren't able to, you know, get to the facilities and stuff. And Aaron's not there. Like he's he's mysteriously absent, but he was just at the USA team trials. He he just got cut from Team USA. So he like wanders in the gym a little bit later. 
we're shooting around. Aaron comes in without a ball, but he starts like, you know, kind of clapping and like making the hand signs like he wants the ball. So Michael over here starts feeding the ball and Aaron's kind of doing a little like around the world. And obviously he's getting pretty far around the world there. You know, he's, he's hitting all those shots because he's Aaron Brooks. And then he misses one. And then he looks at Michael and he goes, bad pass. Indeed. And I will always remember. Then I whipped that next pass to him and he knocked it down. <laughs> it was just one of those like, yeah. oh, Aaron Brooks. He obviously hadn't watched Trey Young with his trainer and all the bad pass. But I, I was really preparing him. If anything. Preparing him for the situations. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. That's like situational training, but we didn't tell him that was a problem he should have yeah. never he never he never got the chance to play with Kyle Kuzma but I, I think he would have thanked me if he yeah he would have like if he comes comes back but he's <laughs> he's doing great with Seattle but love love Aaron Brooks and we could obviously talk about Oregon basketball all day. That is something that we will do in the future. And we definitely definitely will but yeah like um thank you guys for for checking it out and you know who are some people that you think are good you know second round picks like we love hearing about sleepers and just players that yeah. like, you believe in like who have you watched that you just think like People are talking about him, but I see something now. Yeah, any any like wing players in particular, or any people with you feel have uh, some exceptional skills, let us know in the comments, or shoot us an email at viselandpod at gmail.com. Tweet at us um, at viseland anytime. Yeah, at viseland, I am at NBA Draft Mikey V. My shirt, if you want to follow them on Twitter, it is at underscore Pro Insight. And then the website is perspectiveinsight.com. And he is at Jay Weisenberg on Twitter. Um, thank you so much. As always, we appreciate any likes, comments, subscriptions. Thank you so much for anybody that has watched Viseland and uh, to the NBA draft.net people, to the people that follow us on Twitter to the people that have uh, responded to our Facebook or any other social media, or just our friends in general, or our new friends who we like to refer to as Vislanders. Vislandic as well, yeah, is another- Vislandic, yeah. Is another way to describe the people of Vislandia. But thank you guys so much. I probably describe you. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people probably do describe you as that. But thank you guys so much, and we look forward to seeing you next time. We love doing this show, and we, we appreciate you guys taking the time to stop by and watch, listen. And we'll look forward to bringing you an episode next week.